Ladies and gentlemen and all genders outside and in between, welcome back to Thirsty Work, the all-new sex education podcast. With our guest this evening, the most amazing, glorious, flamboyant, babbling goat. Ooh, it's Thirsty Work. Hello, the spectacular specimens of humankind. Welcome back to the home of hedonism, Thirsty Work, the all-new sex ed podcast. And I am being joined today by the glorious babbling goat. Hello, you beautiful individual. How are you doing? Well, hi. <laughs> well, hi, <laughs> I'm indeed. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm very, very good. I'm very, very good. So for all those people that don't know who you are, because I feel like me and my community, I talk about you all the time. So, <laughs> so I feel like they probably are aware. But on the off chance there are people around that don't know who you are, would you like to give yourself a little intro? Yes. Hello. <laughs> my name is Babbling Goat and I am a streamer here on Twitch. Uh, we focus on education, community, love and support aboard our little ship that we call The Whisper because I love the movie Hook just a little bit too much uh, that it maybe is a little bit unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> I am a lecturer at universities, companies, cities and states, within for uh, but not limited to uh, LGBTQI plus social psychology, behavior culture, organizational culture, and more um so I always say that if you have any type of questions you're more than welcome to ask and it's the same here you can you can use channel points um from that domain um to be able to ask a question here today and then we're going to take a look at some questions at the end of the podcast so you are that. more than welcome to use that and then we'll maybe take a look at your question so um, yeah that's me <laughs> hi <laughs> look at you it's like it's rehearsed dear lord <laughs> And you even took my bit as well. I don't even have to do anything. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. That was brilliant. It took me so long as well to remember all of the bits and pieces that we have to say. So, yes, just like Babylon Goat said, friends, people that are watching it live as we're recording here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Val Um you are more than welcome to use your channel points to ask questions, and we will answer them all at the end. But we, I have got an, a, a small banquet full of questions for you today because i like babbling goat is like my go-to lgbtqia resource like you are you are you are just that that person like any question that i have and i feel like i'm pretty well educated but any question that i have i'm like wait a minute i'm, I'm clueless as fuck on this what the fuck right i need to i need to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about babbling goat quick 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 you know but how did you like so okay let's talk about the fact that you are very openly a trans man yes i'm an openly queer transgender man which is fantastic and that's very important i i say that because of the fact that i didn't want to out you and we'll talk about outing <laughs> later on because yeah. that is a very important thing that a lot of people don't realize that they're doing but it's hugely problematic um mm -hmm. so you are very openly um a trans yes. man which i fucking love about that um i i not not specifically that you're a trans man just the fact that you're so open about it because it means that there are so many people here on uh here on twitch and you know people that i've met on other social media platforms uh tiktok twitter and and what have you i've got a very trans community but it's great to be able to f know someone as a resource that i can be like hey i don't have the answers but this is somebody that might this is somebody that might be able to help you because you're, you're you're a right little like a, a standard bearer for, <laughs> for any <laughs> LGBT. I mean, I am. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really really fantastic, you know. But how, so, how did you get into? Because as you said, you're an LGBT, LGBTQI lecturer. How did that come around? Ooh, so I've lectured for about seven years now, but in different subjects. Uh, so we were talking about earlier that I am a cosplayer. I've been a cosplay judge for about seven years for the um, judging the qualifications for the Swedish Cosplay Championships. Uh, and I've also competed in it, so mm, self-plug. Uh, <laughs> Why not? But, uh, uh, but so I started there um, lecturing about craftsmanship, craftsmanship and what do we as judges look for when we judge you um, because cosplay in Sweden were one of the toughest toughest countries in the world to compete in because we are so incredibly thorough like it can come down to that one one stitch in your seam is one millimeter to the left 
and that can cause you to not win. Uh, like it can come down to such tiny details because people are so fucking good and we are so fucking strict. Um, so really? I've hosted lectures about that. Just that... what do you need to know? <laughs> so you did. So you did lectures about because I mean I I know that some of these con competitions can get pretty intense. I was speaking to a friend of mine who was a dance instructor, and she was saying that she once was in not she wasn't judging, mm. but she was in a dance competition. And there was one entry in one of the categories and that entry came second out of one because she wasn't good enough to come first and i was like oh, that's oh. that is so harsh oh, that is that's so, so harsh. harsh like could you imagine i came oh. two out of one entry and just oh. like what? but is it really that strict my god it's yeah, but that's because a lot of people in Sweden are incredibly fucking good when it comes to competing in cosplay, like so fucking good. Yeah. And it's also the competitions we have are direct qualifications to the Swedish championships. Yeah. So sometimes it's more, okay, here we have the cosplay, these are the winners. And other times it's legit, like I've, I've been laying on floors, looking at a seam this long, trying to find whatever so we can decide who is going to be second in first place because it can come so close to the fact that they might look identical they both might look perfect and both of course someone has some people are better at some things and some people are better in other things like 100 percent. yeah but sometimes it's so even that you really have to find that one single little thing so it can be super tough in sweden then it's the same. there is a world famous cosplayer named yayan uh, and she, um, she's she been a judge in Sweden once, and she said so as well, that this is the toughest, the toughest place to compete in. Like the majority of winners in competitions in the United States. Um, and now we're not looking at like the championships, but yeah. like qualifications, like local championships and more, uh, and state championships would not qualify for the Swedish championships. They what? simply would not. That that is the that is I mean that is credit to the caliber of the mm. uh, the costumiers um yeah, over, there, over they're in really good. Sweden then dear and Lord. we also judge very much that we have a picture of the character next to you oh and wow because cosplay in Sweden when you compete is a recreational art not a creative art in a way of course you are creative yeah but you're supposed to recreate something on screen you are not allowed to put in your own details you are not allowed to put in ah, your own ideas okay. you recreate that's you it see, i would be terrible at that if it doesn't have a little bit of vanity and it, it's not worth doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's why you have to find a character that has the vanity right <laughs> that you can be like, yes this would so, be good <laughs> so you started doing lecturing yes, I, about that basically yeah i started lecturing about that and my my specialty within that is <laughs> fun fact pirates because <laughs> i've made so many like uh historically accurate 17th century or 18th century frock coats and um, so that's like my big thing yeah and i've lectured about that and performance um, hmm, i wonder I why <laughs> i wonder why hmm. but i i cosplay or what i I am mainly like in performance because I do have a background in acting. Uh, so I judged a lot of that and lectured a lot about, okay, how do you make a good performance? And um, what do you need to do when you're on stage? What do you need to think about and similar? And then from there, I just got really used to lecturing. And then at my now previous job, because I resigned two days ago, which is fucking terrifying. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to lecture there because we had a lot of issues regarding LGBTQIA+. And I said that this is something that's very, very important. I think we should take a look at it. And I've been a quality coach then. So I had the time in my schedule to be able to lecture and create a lecture about it. So then I started lecturing there um, for mainly for management. And then it became a mandatory thing that when you started working at the company, you needed, or with our site, you needed to go in my lecture. So that like became a thing, yeah. Okay. And um, that's how I realized that, okay, I want to work in HR. I want to become HR. Like, and then I went to the university where I graduate in like two months, which is also terrifying. Oh, <laughs> it's all coming to a head uh, for you, isn't it? 
Yeah, there's a lot going on this year. <laughs> but then during one of the lectures, um, it was about social psychology and we're talking about behavior culture. And then I raised my hand and I was like, oh, so you mean like this and this? And the lecturer just looked at me and was like, how do you know that? I'm like, oh, no, I, like, I've been in charge of a project regarding this and a site-wide change. And I lectured like around this and leadership. And she was like, okay, can you email me after the class? I was like, yeah, sure. And then she asked me to lecture at the university <laughs> for, for my own class and the class above me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing news. I choked on my own fun. drink there. I was just like, oh my God. I've and never so seen then, like then that shit kept rolling. Um, and I've lectured for, I've lectured for the nursing department, like for the professors there about LGBTQI plus and what they, how they, what they need to teach their student regarding treatment of LGBTQI plus people in their medical field. So how they need to handle what they should do and stuff. So it just kept rolling from there. And then, you know, then I started doing it in companies and yeah. And is that the intention then from this point onwards, now that you've resigned two days ago, is that the intention to continue the lecturing? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the dream, yeah, the dream would be to be able to lecture and stream full time. That would be the absolute dream. Now, I know it's very, very difficult, yeah. uh, but that would be the dream. Um, but I'm a hundred percent going to continue lecturing and I'm also looking forward to start working within HR. I want to start working as a recruiter and um, because that's like the entry level job ish. Um, just because it feels like, even though I know I can get high, like higher paying jobs, I'm like, oh yeah. An entry position sounds good. This is a new field. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with that as well. But lecturing is a hundred percent continuing and the goal is to do it full time because I have created a legal company, which is, there's been so much things happening in my life, Malin. This is but fucking you, ludicrous. So you were telling me earlier that, that you are like one of two, like yes. experts in the field. Yes. Yeah. I am one of two lecturers within this field, this field at all in Sweden. Um, it is, we have some people lecturing about trans and LGBTQI plus, but at the, at a complete other scale and like focus, but what I do and with like with my experience and my education, uh, it is with, with two people. It's me and it's Yolanda Bloom. Yolanda Bloom is also an amazing lecturer. She's absolutely fantastic. A wonderful, wonderful trans woman. She's so kind. Um, but she is more specific when it comes to, oh, I said the word before. Now I completely forgot what, what the term is. I do activist, that's activist, um, but yeah. she's, uh, she's activist within it from the activist point of view. And I'm the academic point of view. So in Sweden, I am the only one who has an academic point of view within this. So, I mean, that, that literally makes you the pinnacle of academic specialist within Sweden, would you say? <laughs> kind of like at least at lectures within it, like we have a few people that study it. I like, I work with a Swedish lecturer named Sofia Smolle, um, which is, I, she, at the university, I, um, well, I lecture at and I study at, um, she has had a course, what was it, last summer, this summer, and last autumn regarding uh, transgender identi identification and expression. Okay. Very specific on that. And I was a lecturer during that course. And so, last summer, this summer, and then a master course this, um, this autumn, or last autumn. And so she knows a lot about that and like studies within the field, but she doesn't lecture within it. Okay. So she has a hundred percent more knowledge with me when it comes to the academic studying of the field, a hundred percent. Um, but that's because she is a actual professor, <laughs> like with so a that, PhD, you know? Yeah. So there is actually like, qualification because one of the things that i've always <laughs> struggled with in regards to like because obviously I, I do sex ed now having been a cabaret performer for god knows how long realized how much i enjoy filth wizardry and was like mm, sex is the way forward i need to tell <laughs> I need to teach people that sex is amazing and all yeah. the better for for enjoyment and thereof um but that like there aren't really any like recognized qualifications mm. on no 
deviants. Um, yeah. I would love, I would love for that. Maybe I'll start a school of deviants. But there is actually <laughs> like, like qualifications in regards to like LGBTQIA studies. Is that mm. the way that it works, or is it like a, a, an offset of like sociology or something like that? It's more an offset of sociology, sociology okay. and psychology, but also social care. So Sweden is very, very specific when it comes to fields of studies because we have a big academic foundation in the country. Like when you start up a secondary school, yeah, you mm-hmm. can legit go to schools, like you pick what focus you want to have. So you don't just take like, oh, I have a minor in this or I have a master in that, like a lot yeah. of other places. It's like when I pick my second upper school or secondary upper school, no, that term. <laughs> I in that. Um, but so I picked societal knowledge as the main, but the focus on that was societal knowledge, behavior, culture, leadership and coaching and power. So that in itself was one class that was Go through one those again. line. Okay. Yeah, Talk- so so uh, the base was societal knowledge. Okay. Because you pick a base of either societal or nature knowledge in Sweden okay. uh, or music. Um, and then uh, it is um, behavior. Okay. So behavior studies. And then on that, leadership and organization and coaching and power. Right, so far all I've heard is brat taming. That's basically <laughs> <laughs> I mean almost. Except I would it would be weird for me to be a brat tamer because I'm the biggest submissive in the entirety of existence. <laughs> so it'd be so far I cannot see myself. And you said this tried. before. Like you've said yeah, this uh-huh. before that people think you are really dominant. And... Oh, oh people think I'm a daddy. <laughs> like they legit they think I am such a big daddy and i told them no i'm not and people have gotten into fights with me whether i'm a daddy or not they do not take no for an answer and like no 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 ha 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 you're a daddy i'm like no 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 like i'm i'm not and it's gone to the point that there's been people in my chat <laughs> that is also like be like you're a daddy and chat has said no he's not and the person is not listened, and they're not trolling. <laughs> and it's like, no, I am. I'm so not a daddy. Like I usually say, there's not a dominant bone in my body unless it is my dominant bone in my body. <laughs> like, Entirely <that> is, apt. <laughs> otherwise, it's, absolute, it's absolutely not. It, like I'm not dominant in any way, fucking shape or form that people think I am. I love that. Which I is an honour, I guess. Well, I do, do you know what? I can, I can kind of understand it because of the oh, fact yeah, yeah. I can see that it. like, I am so very feminine in so many ways. And, and I, I'm very, oh, calm yourself. What do you like? I'm like mm. I get the opposite. I get people being like, like coming up and like, and, and obviously this is like a bad example, but it's the first one that springs to mind was I was mm. in a club and on the dance floor and this guy came over and grabbed a big handful of my ass and i turned around i was like excuse you and they were like yeah you like that don't you and i was like i'm about to put you in your place and you don't even know what's coming oh bless you and like it was just like like just that whole thing they just they were like oh yeah that guy over there who's wearing the feathers and the makeup and the skinny jeans and looks like a an absolute fallout from the 80s rock scene yeah that that guy's like well into into kink and fetish and stuff and he's like all oh, right okay yeah i'm going to go over and and show him how dominant i am i'm yeah. like all right let's fucking go <laughs> yeah oh jeez you know oh no no, it's people... classic. These misconceptions that people have. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I get it that people are like, oh, yeah, that's a very, like, w- it, the Swedish term for it is pondus, which is demeanor. Pondus. pondus. Okay. So that's demeanor. So how you hold yourself, the energy you exude, you know, all of that jazz. Okay. And in that, mm, I am very dominant. Like, yes. I know what I want, I know what I do. Um, I know I'm very fucking good at what I do. You cannot speak over me. I will p- put you in your fucking place. <laughs> but that is me in my everyday in my professional life. Yeah. Um, but sexually, absolutely not. <laughs> but this is a recurring no. thing. Like in, in regards to because I run fetish nights and I've been part of running fetish nights for God knows how long now. 
and like, I'm talking like 10 years I've been part of the fetish scene and they're they we have all types one of the reasons one of the reasons why people ask about why they can't take photos and stuff in um the fetish clubs is because of the fact that we have people that are really big on their anonymity because they are judges because they are police officers because they're people with like positions of power and yet they love to be bent over a bench and flogged do you know what i yeah. mean like it's it's <laughs> yeah. that like but it, it's they such can like be. i always say like when i talk sexually with people um i i take so many decisions in my everyday life i make decisions all of the fucking time and they're all huge decisions so for once when i'm with someone i really just don't want to make a decision yeah. i just really don't want to i just want someone to be like okay this is what we're gonna do today okay this is gonna how you're gonna act today i'm like absolutely thank you if i take up my uh take off my i uh, take up my phone take it and put it away you know to just be forced to not you know but uh so yeah so it's a very very nice type of relief kind yeah. of yeah i love that i love that okay let's let's get back to to yes. um uh, a, a slightly more serious because so far of all of the things that i have listed down uh, we've talked about one um <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to be the case with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as you, uh, as we talked about earlier, you are very, very openly uh, a trans man, and mm. and I, and as I said before, I, I absolutely fucking love that because, like I said, it's it's a it's a great you're a great person that I can point people to, especially as the fact that you are so like first of all knowledgeable because you're an LGBTQI lecturer, second of all um, approachable in the fact that you Aww. don't. Like, one of the things that I would say about you that really works is the fact that you don't just shoot people down. And mm. this is something that I have found is is certainly a problem, but I get it within the LGBTQIA community. Oh, um, yeah. Is there is a large percent of people who are so tired of justifying themselves and their own existence that they just don't want to have to explain everything mm. again. And and as a result, they're they're like for fuck's sake, just fucking get it. And they might mm. bite people's heads off and not realize that that's how they... The problem with biting yeah. somebody's head off is the fact that they dig their heels and they go, well, I obviously have uh, had a bad experience with this. And <laughs> and that's the problem. But you aren't. You're, you're like really approachable and you take the time with people and, and that's really, really good. But so talk, talk me through the point where you realized you were trans. The point, the, the point if, if it was a point or whether it was a gradual thing where you were like, do you know what? Something's not right. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that one talk, when one talks about these things, it's very important to know that one story is never the same as one someone else's. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you might be trans or that you've had your eye on it, kind of, don't feel like it, you're not valid because your story might not match someone else's because everyone has their own story and their own journey and you are valid 100%. So it can be good to get people's insights and thoughts and feelings, but know that your story doesn't have to be the same or in the same way. It, it very, very seldom is. But I, I realized I was trans. It was very clear for me. Like I didn't have the term then, yeah? But I remember I was like, f I want to say five, but I think I was maybe four, you know? Okay. And I was laying in my bed uh, about to sleep in my bed that I couldn't fit in because I had so many fucking teddy bears that were so big and I didn't want them to sleep on the floor because I thought they'd hate me and be cold. So I could barely fit in my bed next to the teddy bears. Uh, and I remember looking up in the ceiling and I said, when I turn 25, I'll become a man. And I was just crystal fucking clear. And then I didn't think about it really anymore because it was so clear to me. Um, but then it was, and then when I turned like 13, I started feeling it so much more. And I remember like talking to my parents and saying, I, I think I'm a man. And they were like, okay, keep thinking about it. There's nothing we can do now because of the legal system in Sweden, but keep thinking about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until I met 
the first openly out trans person um, who I've gotten permission to talk about, um, who is absolutely amazing. His name is Zacharias, um, which is fun because my, my name is Gabriel, so we're both angels, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> love that, but, love that. <laughs> right? But it wasn't until I, I met him and we were like in a changing room, I think uh, we been bathing in a lake or something and he had a chest binder on and I asked like what's that and I was like no you're too young to understand like can can you tell me and I was like okay fine I'm a transgender man and then he explained what that was and it just clicked in my head because suddenly I heard the term it just clicked and then it became just really fucking clear to me and I got to meet his medical personnel because I emailed them directly uh and then got, yeah, I started getting into the system, kind of. Um, so, and I've said this multiple times, like, I would not be here without Zacharias. I would not, would absolutely not. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, so it's important, like, I knew that I was trans, but I didn't know it was a thing you could actually be, kind of. Yeah, I get that. I, do you know what? I get that, like, quite a lot. Like, the idea of the fact that you can just... That there is a part of yourself that wants to be something, whether that be, in, in your scenario, like, transgender, or even something mm -hmm. as, as simple as myself, just excessively more flamboyant. Um, like, there's a part of you that's like, you can do this, or this is the way mm -hmm. you want to be, but you're mm -hmm. kind of like you don't realize that it is something that is even a thing until it's put in your face. And you're like, mm. oh shit. Like this is, this is actually, it, like you say, it just clicks and it's just like, this makes sense. Like, yeah, this, this no, exactly. Sense. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah. So I know I, it was the same. I have a great friend, uh, Dorian, who has also got a permission to talk about. It. And like Zacharias is my, we call it transparent, yeah. Okay. And I'm Dorian's transparent. Ah, okay. Because okay, okay. we randomly met when we were playing Elder Scrolls Online, me and our friend Polly. So me and Polly were playing a dungeon and we fucking sucked, yeah? We were so fucking bad. Oh my God. We didn't manage to kill a single thing. And so... Oh, okay, <laughs> we... okay. Hold on a minute, right. When you said a dungeon, I went somewhere completely oh, no. different. All right. No, no, no. Just no, cross the line. A dungeon in the game, Alan. Okay. All right. That's corner. fine. That's all right. Okay. Like, I just wanted to check. Yeah. In the in the game. <laughs> so we were playing. We were killing monsters in the game. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm getting it. Good. Uh, and we were playing with this random person, and they wrote in chat like, "I'm sorry." But what the fuck are you doing? You're so fucking bad. And we were like, we're so sorry. It's the first time we're playing the Stone Gym, but we're talking over Discord, so we're trying to fix it. And they were like, can I join? And we were like, sure. Like, let's put the Swede aside, because Swedes never talk to strangers ever. We don't even walk out of our apartment building to walk down the stairs if we hear our neighbor we wait behind the door <laughs> even if the means will be surbus we swedes do not talk to each other uh, oh, okay all. all right so we were like okay yeah sure and this person joined and it was then dorian and we were talking and we're playing and super wonderful person and then me and dorian kept playing during the night and i talked about me being trans and who I was and open up and Dorian comes, uh, lives in Norway, uh, but comes from Greece uh, whose family still lives in Greece and are pretty conservative. Um, and I was like, you're more than welcome to ask questions. And he just asked all of the questions. Yeah. And then like two, three days later, he wrote me on Discord and I was like, hi, I've been thinking about what we talked about. I think I'm trans. And he had no idea you could be trans before he met me. And now, late last year, he's he's been on hormones now for like six or seven months, maybe soon a year. He legally changed his name and gender in the papers like two months ago. Um, so love that. So it's it's so important to see representation, to meet people, and to talk with people. And yeah, 
So I'm very happy I could be that person um, that Zacharias was to me. Um, so that is a very, a very, very big part of my trans story and a lot of other people's trans stories as well, because it's when you see someone be loud and be proud and be them that you realize, hey, that's kind of me, you know? Do you know what? It's, it's, it's bizarre because weirdly, and I don't think I've ever told you this, but weirdly you are a big part of my understanding of trans stories is probably the best way of putting it. Um, I'm honoured. Because the moment I realised the gravity of what it was to be transgender, you had put up, because you'd had um, an operation, uh, a, a top, the top operation. Yes. And um, I believe it was the second operation you'd had on... Yes, Twitter. I've had two top surgeries, yes. Yeah, because whatever the scenario, you've had two top surgeries. Yeah. The, but the, the, the second one, and I remember very clearly you putting up a video about mm. your t second top surgery and i retweeted it with the most gusto i have retweeted anything with i think ever in my entire life because i weirdly like a few days beforehand i'd been arguing with somebody uh, who was very anti-trans and what have you and 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 i am known to do this because i'm a very justice complex kind of person <laughs> like but I've been arguing with this person and um, then I saw your video and like that moment, that penny drop moment where you were just so overjoyed, so happy, the tears, the smiles, the, the, the peace behind your eyes was, was, some, was just absolutely something else. And like weirdly, I got a little bit jealous because I was like, <laughs> I, will, I will never feel that level of happiness like they, they, i just won't because they they there's no there's nothing big enough in my life that is wrong that is that is incorrect that it doesn't fit right like a puzzle piece that doesn't fit right that that is going to cause me that level of absolute joy and then i immediately thought about this this woman that i'd been arguing with and was just like how fucking dare you how dare you take this level of joy away from somebody how dare you take that this level of of peace and and self assuredness away from somebody that that needs that that needs that just to be complete in themselves and oh yeah I'm I'm, I'm getting a little emotional I'm getting a little emotional <laughs> I mean, all right same though but and it can be good just to mention yes like on that subject when it comes to surgeries a lot of people think that it needs to be perfect the first time. And for me, it wasn't my first surgeon. He was one of the best in Sweden regarding this, but he purposefully left pieces in my chest. He made holes. He left too much skin, you know? So like here, I have like a hole that just goes straight in because I have nothing there, you know? Um, and it, it just looks like I still had boobs. I went from a C cup to an A cup, you know, if even that. And I remember then I waited three years for another surgery because I said, I, I, I want a revision. Like I, yeah. I, I want to do it again. And he said, well, it's not going to get better. Like you need to be realistic. It's not happening. And then I met my second surgeon because the other guy left. Um, we'd never met before. The first time he even saw my chest was 30 minutes before the surgery in the morning. Um, and he came in and we talked and he was like, there's probably not much I'm going to be able to do. Like, we need to be realistic. And I was like, yeah, 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 but anything, like just tighten it up, anything. And I was like, okay, can I see? And then I showed, showed him and he looked furious and he said, okay, so there's a lot we can do here. And he did so much. And that is also a part for like my, my extreme joy, right? Um, so a lot of people think that it needs to be perfect the first time, but it doesn't. It's, and it's never really going to be perfect either because we do need to be realistic about our bodies and what can, what can be done and similar. Um, but know that if you do not 
feel satisfied or feel that something is wrong after a surgery, no matter if it's top surgery or bottom surgery or surgery on your knee, trust your gut. Don't, don't be like, oh yeah, it's good enough. No, tell them it's not. Tell them you want a revision. Like in Sweden, you, they are legally obligated to give you a second surgery. And it's the same in a lot of countries around the world. And if you want a third, then you have to pay for it. But in Sweden, you, they're legally obligated. So make sure that just because you don't feel the men's joy that maybe others did, like pictures you see in clips, that's okay. We all experience joys in different types of ways. And if you're not happy, make them take a second look at it because there's a lot of shame in the trans community of having a second surgery. Like there's a lot of shame. Um, but it's what, like it's it wasn't not... done right the first time. Therefore you don't deserve a second one. What, what kind of, yeah. And like, what? you should be happy that you got it, you know? Um, and so there's like a lot, a lot of shame about it. Um, but it's not shameful to have another surgery do not it. Not at all. And not a all. second surgery can make it even better. It did for me. So but just that's, 100%. Do you know what? It's, it's something that I've said in my, like, I, I openly admit, I'm like, hey, first things first, I am not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination. But at the end of the day, medical professionals are still human. And... Mm. Humans make mistakes, and it is not mm. is not a bad thing to turn around and be like, "Hey, I want a second opinion," or "Hey, I would yeah. like to revisit this on on any mm. like you said on on any aspect of any kind of medicine." It's just like, "Hey, yeah, let's take a moment. Let's take a moment and just have a look at this." So yeah. was that like like I was about to t turn around and ask you about like the point where you uh, came out to like friends and family and like normalizing mm -hmm. the new you, but from the sounds of things, your family were quite open-minded from from an early age yeah relatively i mean my dad was a lot more close-minded at the start mm -hmm. but that's because he's from he's from a small farm up north in sweden you know okay okay on the outskirts you know so i i get it and he's been in the military for a, a big chunk of his life and then worked as a pilot for another place and like it's a very it's a very heteronormative masculinity type of place to be, kind of. Um, so he was a lot more at the start, like, oh, okay, I have to learn about this, you know. And I remember him saying that, well, you'll, I, like, what should I call you? And I was like, well, your son. I was like, yeah, but you're not my son. Maybe you are my trans son, you know. Um, yeah. But then through the years, like, he's so loving and so accepting now. Like, I remember the first time he wrote to me, I love you, my son, on, like, on message, and I just wept, you know. But he's been, he's been very, very accepting since then, really trying to learn. My mother is also accepting, but she's the one that said, um, well, so you've murdered my daughter. Um, she told me once, and wow. that's a pretty common thing trans people hear from parents because generally they're not accepting pretty much. So it's very common for parents to hear a lot to say that to their children, which is a horrible thing to say. Um, yeah. But they've also, they've always been supportive in some type of way. Um, and I came out to everyone else uh, on Facebook. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Because I just didn't have the, <laughs> I was like, I, I know too many people, I'm just going to come out. And then, you know, friends, or family friends, that, you know, last saw me when I was like six, you know, mm -hmm. they commented and were like, finally, now you know as well. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you know what? That is <laughs> so, so common with, with a lot of people, usually with yeah. like sexualities and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Like just like, oh, finally, God, well done. Catch up with us, Jesus, you know? Like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I remember when, like, when I came out, like a lot of people think that like the older generation and then we're talking like 60 plus, maybe 70 plus, are the ones that are not accepting and i just want to break that misinformation and say that no that is not the people generally the people that are not accepting are between 30 and 55 and those are the people that are not accepting 
Um, but I remember when I told my mom, my mom told my grandma, so I didn't get to tell my grandma myself. And then my grandma told my great grandma and she was, I think she was like 82 at a time or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and suddenly I got a letter in the mail, like a handwritten letter. And she mm. would always, she was always buying these letters and then it, like these cards and instead of writing on the card she would put a note in it because she was like the card is so pretty this means you can reuse it you know oh, uh, <laughs> but now she bought a really pretty card this is actually like written in the card and i hadn't talked to her about this at all i hadn't said the change of my name nothing you know and she wrote um hi my dear gabriel i don't care what name you use, you will always be my little angel. Uh, I love you so much. I remember when you used to live on Gotland and uh, there was a guy down the street, the little kid's name was Gabriel. I really liked him and you remind me of him and know that I will always love you no matter what. P.S. It's good that you picked male because we have so few in the family. <laughs> 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 I love that. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And she you know wrote it, it's me. interesting though because I remember mm. like my my family have have been my family are very open minded anyway. But I remember my parents being like, "Hey, it's okay if you're gay." And I was like, "Uh, okay, like this is out of the blue out of nowhere, but fine." But I remember my grandparents being like, "Hey, Val, just so you're aware, we may not always agree with you." But will always support you. Aww. Which at the time I was a teenager and I fucking hated because I was like, <laughs> how dare you agree with something? How dare you support something you don't agree with? What a preposterous concept. Why would you ever yeah. do that? But it, in hindsight, at an older age, I'm like, actually, that is, that's them turning around and being like, we're, we're not down with the kids these days. We don't know yeah. what's happening, but whatever it is you that makes you happy, we'll be with you. And, you know, mm. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, an older age. At the time, yeah. I was a little shit, but at, at an older age, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely appreciate that. So you've yeah. actually been quite like open since the beginning, really, about about everything. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I have. I have been very open, and it was when I changed my name that, like, I came out to like my teachers and stuff at school as well, because I've been, I've been so incredibly lucky my entire life to have such an immense support system. I've yeah. been so lucky and my psychology teacher at school helped me so much, you know, uh, absolutely. Um, but I like, I came out there as well and I, I've always been out and it's important to know that no one, you don't have to be out if you don't want to, like no matter if you're out to yourself or to everyone or to one person. Um, or never want to be out to anyone, you're 100% valid. The only thing that matters is that you're happy. Um, but I've been open, and that's because I've actively decided to be the person that is and to be the one that's open to questions when questions arise. Because if someone doesn't ask, how are they going to know? And how are they going to learn? And how are they going to change? And people say, I've never met a trans person. 99% you have. You just don't know that you're trans. Yeah. It's like saying, oh, I never met a gay person. No, 99% you have. You just don't know that you're gay. Um, yeah. But to be that, oh, no, you 100% have met a trans person. Here you go. I'm open, you know. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've always been open. And that's been an active decision for my part. Which is, which is fantastic. And just for the clarity of our listeners, like the definition of outing is... Well, for, for being out is being open with yourself about sexualities or your gender or, or any realms within the LGBTQIA. Um, exactly. And there is also a danger therein of being outed when you're not ready to be outed, which I know that you've yes. talked about before. Would you mm. like to explain a little bit more about yeah, the dangers? <laughs> because that's, I feel like that's really important because it is. I've definitely been in positions before where people have asked me, Oh, is so and so gay? Oh, is so and so trans? 
and and I'm like, don't ask me. Like that, that mm-hmm. it's it's inappropriate for you to ask me. Go speak to them. Go go talk to them about it and and see how they feel. Like I'm not gonna tell you like some kind of gossip. It's mm-hmm. this is their life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that, yeah. and that's the way I react to it. But I know that it does happen, and I think it's important for people to understand the dangers therein of that. Yeah. Yeah, so just as you're saying, like, it, it is someone's life that we're talking about in multiple aspects. Um, so outing is when you disclose someone's gender identity, sexuality, or romantic orientation or relationship consolidation without their explicit consent. So, for example, if, um, if let's say we were to walk into a room um, and we had some people sitting at the table that we know, um, and we were talking to them, and there comes there or uh, there's like a few new people, and you suddenly go, "Oh, hey, this is Gabriel, my friend. He's trans." Yeah. Then you're informing people that I do not know without my explicit consent, I'm trans, and that might not seem like a big thing, but the thing is that you never know who that person is. You never know who that person knows. Yeah. You have no idea who's listening. It can be so dangerous. I've had friends who have been outed to Nazis without the knowledge, you know, it, yeah, people who have received death threats from big and uh, neo-Nazi organizations in Sweden, a friend who's had to escape the country because of it, like, did I accidentally out you at the beginning of the podcast then? Oh, God. No, I'm yeah. feeling really bad. <laughs> uh, but I've got in consent from them as well, because it's always yeah. important to get consent before talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, so I've had, I have so many friends who have accidentally been outed and not by the person who's accidentally outed them, haven't had any ill will or ill intention, but you have no idea who's listening. You've absolutely no clue, and it can be so dangerous. And not only can it be very dangerous, but it's also very rude because mm-hmm. that's a part of me. Some people don't want to be open. They don't want to be out. Some because they don't want to be a spokesperson for it. Some because they just uh, want to be them and to exist or that it gives them the dysphoria to say that there are trans, for example, because they feel othered when they do or when people say that they're trans. So it's so important to just have decent respect to the person and be aware how dangerous it can be if you out someone. And it's also pretty weird. Like, imagine yeah. if I were to come in with my dad into the room. It's like, hi, this is my dad. He's straight. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, yeah, I can Why see that. Why is one. that information important? Why is that information relevant? Mm-hmm. It's not at all. Um, so I actually had an old school friend, like high school friend, wrote to me, uh, like, maybe a year ago or something and it was with with elliot page who's an actor um in uh, well i don't uh, it's umbrella academy right i don't want yes. to show yeah, yeah, yeah. but yes um who has come out as trans uh, and then there's this thing called dead naming and dead naming is when you say someone's name that they do not identify with so a previous name for example um, so for me, upon birth, my parents gave me a name, which is the only question I will not answer, which is what name was that? I will never answer that question. And that's because I have, and people said, oh yeah, that name kind of fits you. Oh. <laughs> and it's like... But it's also <laughs> not relevant anymore. Like, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. superfluous, yeah. you know? Like, it doesn't matter at all. Um, but people think it does. Um, yeah. But it doesn't. Um, so when you dead name someone, it's when you say that name. Um, either to other people or to them themselves. Um, so it was uh, when uh, when Elliot came out, my friend wrote me and said, Hi, I just wanted to ask you, if I talk to people we went to school with before you were out, how should I refer to you if we talk about you or if it becomes relevant? I'm like, that's a great question. So what you should do is that you should never out me unless I give consent, which I do. 
then you should never detonate me, no matter what. So what you should do is explain, like talk about the person instead. Oh, you know, the person that always wore this shirt or that always liked this song or yeah. had different hair colors or that had really pretty eyes, you know, that went, uh, that we wrote an assignment with, that went to this school, that went, that was always late, you know, try to explain around the person and those types of things instead without saying the old name and without misgendering because misgendering is saying for example say saying she to me when my pronouns yes. are he him and identify as male so misgendering is saying a pronoun or a gender identity the person do not identify with mm -hmm. um so explain around that instead and then i said that if the person still doesn't connect that it's me then they do not know me well enough or care about me enough to remember me. And then it's not relevant because if they cannot that's, connect it, then it's not relevant. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's, I never thought about it like that, but that actually makes a lot of sense. It's like, what did you know about them? Did you, did you just know their name? And mm. in that case, then why, why does it matter who they are? Exactly. Whereas, if you knew them because of identifying features or identifying tales that they, Jesus, mm. some of the things I did when I was a, a young one, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. If you don't know them well enough to know them by reputation, then you don't know them well enough for it to matter. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter. Then it's just like, okay, just introduce me as Gabriel then. And if I were to meet that person, then it's my decision if I want to say something and what yeah. I want to say, because that is my decision. Like telling people I'm trans, it is not someone's right to know yeah. that I'm trans. It is a privilege. Yeah. And it's a 100%. privilege I will give, not something that you will have. Yeah. Pretty much. And it's the same no matter what so it is my it's my right to give not yours um which is fantastic with like it, it's good to have that clarity now i've realized that an hour has gone by really really quickly <laughs> <laughs> i've got so many questions i still have to ask um what we'll do is we'll we'll split this into uh two into two podcasts into two cheeky little podcasts and if you're happy to keep going we'll keep going i know i definitely yes. have pre-spoken to you about this is not like i'm springing on it but i'm gonna pretend it's spontaneous all right um oh wow babbling goat are you happy to keep going oh my has it been an hour it yes, has we have such lovely conversations oh, of course i am shooketh oh dear um <laughs> Right, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll round up this podcast and then we'll have a cheeky little break and then we will continue on because I have so many things to, I have so many questions. I have so, so much interest. It, there's a lot of things going on and I knew this was going to happen because me and you talk for hours anyway, you know. <laughs> um, people, I'd like to say a massive thank you for the end of this podcast to, uh, first of all, my amazing guest, Babbling Goat, mm. your beautiful human being. Um, would you like to r tell people where they can find you, please? If you want to watch more of Babbling Goat, you can find him on twitch.tv forward slash Babbling Goat, where he streams Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 7 p.m. GMT plus one and Sundays. So tomorrow, Sunday um, at 3 p.m. GMT plus one. And if you want to have a lecture at your organization and university, you can contact him at the goat that babbles at gmail.com. Welcome. <laughs> what? What an email. The goat the babbles at uh, gmail.com. Yeah, that... <laughs> I try. I tried to take babbling goat, yeah, but it's taken. So I was Been like, how them. can I? It's like the goat that babbles. I that guess. means makes complete sense. Makes complete <laughs> sense. Um and also like to thank the the wonderful Mountain Goat for the theme tune, the wonderful Kate Sway for all of the graphics, and the wonderful Alexander Devonport for all of the background art that we have here on the VOD, if you're watching the VOD live. Um, people, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Valenvane and uh, Valenvane on pretty much every social media. We will end this podcast, but for those people that are watching live, we're going to go to a, a break. Bye.